cyber security now has become talk of talk of the board members as well. So earlier those were the days when CIOs and CISOs were concerned about cyber security. Now things have changed. Now the business leaders, the CEOs, CFOs are highly concerned about how things are moving because cyber security is no more a enabler. It is part of integral part of the business and sometimes it is your business. So things have changed and we want uh, people to start thinking of that. Initially, uh, cyber security was looked upon as a support function. Then people thought of it as an enabler. It's no more enabler. It's like uh, if you lose your data, you lose your credibility. And there is one report which clearly says that any organization who has a data breach, their stock price went drastically down over the period of the next two years. So who, which organization, which board member or CEO can afford to have a breach happening in their organization. Most of the difficult one, of course, uh, when customer invite us to investigate already breached happen, when which it happen and they want to do, they want us to do the forensics, they want to us uh, to find out who did that breach. Sometimes very difficult, though we can identify whether there is a breach existing in the network or no. We can do a containment, we can do a, a remediation, we can do a complete cleanup. The most difficult part is to find out who did that breach and where did the breach started from because nowadays the attacks and malware are designed such a way that they do their job and they self-destruct themselves. They don't even leave any of the traces to be identified. So it's getting difficult for us to identify from where the attack started. I think something that I can share about in the Philippines, right? four or five years ago when we talked about advanced persistent threat or targeted attacks, most of the people found the topic very interesting, very sexy to talk about targeted attacks or advanced persistent threat. But the questions they left during the time was, will PHB or Philippines be a target, targeted country? I mean, are we big enough? Is our company big enough to be hacked by these hackers to be targeted? Those were the times four or five years ago. But now, when you talk about cyber uh, threats, the question now is, when will it happen to us? And the problem is, there's no answer to that question. Because right now, nobody can tell us when will it happen to you or to us, to anybody. But the good thing is we can prepare. The only thing that we can do right now is to prepare and make sure that you have the right solutions in place all the angles that you look at, layers of solution is something that we recommend to everybody. And making sure that whatever you see, you know, like for example, the traditional uh, perimeter firewall will not be enough to cover, to help you with this data breach. But north and south traffic, it can detect, but once it's inside, your firewall cannot detect it anymore. So it should be a layered security approach for everybody. Yeah. You know, ransomware started by targeting a small Soho segment six, five, six years back. It's not new. Ransomware was there even 2012, 2011. But they started identifying the individual people or the SMB or very small, not even SMB, very small organization who were least worried about security, who had the least awareness about security and they never used to care about what kind of downloads and URLs they are clicking. That's how they started. It took a while and that started pumping money for them. So they started gathering money, they become financial strong, uh, financially strong and then it become a big ecosystem for people to start launching a uh, customized and organized ransomware attacks on large organizations. So those things which started very small, people just ignored it thinking this only for small users and not a big money going. They were asking for $1,000, $2,000 of ransomware. They became big and they started attacking on enterprise. The reason why it started happening was they, they were doing a very small thing. They were identifying the most vulnerable uh, users in the organization. After doing a massive social engineering understanding what he does, his demographic and geographic and interest area and used to send a spear phishing mails or targeted mails which has, uh, which has some downloads available. The moment the person clicks the download the uh, get executed and uh, ransomware was executed. So it used to simply encrypt the, encrypt the hard disk or the file uh, and it was very very widely spread and easily doable. You know, so that's how uh, the economy of scale and uh, ability to make money entice all the hackers to start doing more of ransomware attack. I think one of the 
the most important things that people would understand is making sure that vulnerability being taken care of. I mean, all the companies, mostly enterprise, there are vulnerabilities on the OS. They have to patch it all the time and making sure that patches are available. But one thing that is in reality, patch is sometimes not at the right time available. It's not available at the right time. And to do the patch, it's, it will take like 60 to 90 days. And during those times that the patch are not, or being tested, companies are vulnerable. Now, Trend Micro has the virtual patching that can provide temporary protection by using the IPS rule. So you provide that IPS rule, hackers would see that vulnerability as nothing. There's no vulnerability. And that gives time the, to the customers for them to patch the OS properly at the right time. The biggest problem uh, today most of the organizations are facing is their business team is moving too fast, adopting technology. And those technologies being used by the, by the hackers as well. So at Trend Micro, we believe our job are in two phases. Number one, of course, we go back to customers and partners and educate them about how they should be preventing those kind of attacks, how they should have their de deployment done for the detection, how should have their deployment of technology done for the, for the prevention and remediation as well. What we are doing is we are providing a lot of tools and technology which can gel very well with their developed infrastructure, which may be their cloud, which may be IoT, or which may be a latest uh, operating system that they are having. And second thing, we have developed a tool and technology which combined with services, we can give a good managed detection and response capability to customer. By using MDR, which we can partner with some of the SOC provider uh, locally in our country, we can give them proactive alert in terms of what is going wrong and what will happen if they don't patch or they don't take an action in the next couple of months. So we believe that our job is to educate customer and give them visibility proactively on what's wrong in their organization so that they can take action even before some serious breach happens there.